we starting with this week? A wee review. Oh, Yay! Yeah! yeah. <clears throat> Apple Supremacy. This one is from last year. It says, you just have to listen. It's five stars. This may be the world's best podcast. And I'm 100% sure Corey reads my mind. Every time I'm thinking about something interesting, next week it's the topic of the podcast. Don't snooze. Start listening. Don't snooze. Don't snooze. snooze. Don't you dare Don't snooze. 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 <laughs> it's a tough word to say. But wait, first, hold on. I just need to... Read. Are you snoozing? I'm reading a mind. Don't snooze. I'm reading someone's that, mind right now, mm-hmm. and I've got the topic for this week. I've read their mind, and I've taken the topic. Let's start the show. No, 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 no. Okay. You, we have a question I mean, to start offered. first. We always have a question. Yeah, I forgot. It was a test, actually. So, <clears throat> the question this week is, are you an empath? Let us know in the YouTube comments if you're listening on Spotify or Apple or anywhere else. Head to YouTube, get into the comments, and tell us, are you an empath? Yes or no? Start is this going to be an episode where you sh- on the idea of people being empaths. Let's start the show. (laughs) Hello and welcome to the Sci Guys, the show where we talk about the crazy, weird, and wonderful stories from the science world. I'm Corey, and as always, I'm joined by my co-hosts, Jamp and Luke Cutforth. Hello. Hi, howdy. This week, we're talking about rodent rescues. Rodent rescues. So, we often put human characteristics on animals, don't we? You know, human emotions, human sort of actions. We like to say, you know, this dog is doing something. Mm-hmm. Oh, the dog, the dog feels sorry for you. Oh, Anth- the dog. Anthropomorphization. Yes. Yeah. 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 That, that word that I said flawlessly. Yeah. Do you want to try it again? Anthropomorphizing. <laughs> Yeah, somehow you, somehow, you, somehow you did it worse the second time. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, but obviously it's hard. To, sorry, that was really well, funny. I, I came in less confident the second time. <laughs> Sometimes it's really hard to tell when we're projecting onto animals and when it's actually an animal doing a thing, right? Mm. You know, like it, it's hard to tell what's going on inside the noggin of a little. A little creature. So that's usually quite... very little in my experience. <laughs> very little's going on in your noggin. I disagree. Too much is going on in your noggin, if anything. It's somewhere in between the two. <laughs> <laughs> or it, it, fl- it fluctuates normal. between those two extremes. <laughs> <laughs> too little. Oh, too much. It oh, never too rests little. in between. <laughs> and that's the trick, actually. If you're watching this podcast, which I would absolutely recommend, I don't know, I'm looking to the camera when I say I, should, I would recommend watching this podcast, but I'm going to do it. When, you're, when you watch this podcast, you get to see Luke spacing out and you have to decide whether it's because too much is going on or too little is going on. <laughs> so, uh, pro-social behavior and empathy. Do, you, do either of you know what pro-social behavior and empathy are? Can you give me a quick definition of when either? You're pro at being social. Is it, um, is it <laughs> well, okay. uh, behavior <laughs> that uh, promotes sort of um, group success? Mm, not quite. I mean, that's kind of more altruism. That's altruism, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's more out. That's more kind of on the. Well, no. Although, how about I explain what they are, yeah. um, and then instead of saying what they're not, it's probably a lot easier, right? Okay. Well, we could, you could, we could guess loads of times, and then you could say whether they're not those things, and eventually we'll find out, find out what they are. Why don't we change what the podcast is? Screw this whole science thing. Yeah. Right. Let's okay. get rid of that. Let's just for the rest of time, you say things, and I'll tell you. Whether it, they are or not the thing that I'm thinking about, right? That's that the podcast. Like a load of fun. That sounds like a lot of fun, right? Okay, let's let's start now. What is pro-social behavior? And... It's the not antisocial behavior. <laughs> That's right. Is yeah. it um, social behavior? But you're really good, so you're a professional at oh, it. So it's not. <laughs> you get paid for it. Wow. That's... <laughs> yeah. That's really pro. <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> it's not. No. How about I just tell you what it is? I feel like this podcast has run its course. Is so- it what we do when we are social media people? <laughs> that we do it as our job. We're pro-social and our behavior is pro-social behavior. Sure. Okay. Do you want to know what the actual definition is? Yes, please. So that's wrong? <laughs> yes. yes Luke, that's okay. wrong. Yes. Should have been more clear. <laughs> so, <clears throat> um, pro-social behavior, the definition of it, the definition I have sitting right in front of me, and I'll quote it word for word, is... <clears throat> Any action that benefits another organism, regardless of intent or motivation. I feel like that's ah. what I said to begin with. Mm, you said that um, that it sort of increases the uh, sort of uh, w- I can't remember the exact word. Basically, you said makes it better for the group. That's that's is not that wrong. Okay. Yeah, that is wrong. Okay. <laughs> that's why I said that. Cool. <laughs> yeah. No. So it's any action that benefits another organism, regardless of intent or motivation. When you say the group, that benefits everyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
it's just, it, I mean, just has to be, it could be any one yeah. other living thing, any organism. Okay. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't even need to be the same organism as you. So if I, for example, petting a dog on the head is pro-social behavior. I was going to say yeah. For example, if I pet a dog on the head and yeah. the dog loved it, yeah, that's pro-social behavior. Nice one. Like whether whether I'm doing it to get enjoyment for myself or not. Yeah. Right. So whether whether I'm petting the dog in the head just out of the goodness of my heart or because I really love I, I oh gosh, I love petting them dogs on their heads. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it's all pro social behavior. I have a specific question. Um so if you pet the dog on the head, right, and the dog enjoys it, mm -hmm. then the dog did enjoy it, but it doesn't benefit the organism in any way. The organism isn't then more likely to survive or more likely to reproduce because you patted it on the head. Unless in some very weird roundabout way it actually is because happiness makes it more bold or something. Um, I, dis I, I disagree in that um, if you... Okay, so for example, if I was to lock you in a room by yourself forever, yeah, you'd probably get on fine. But if I was to lock like a normal person on their own <laughs> in a room forever... <laughs> <laughs> they probably wouldn't enjoy it very much. And then yeah. if you came and in and you patted me on the head, yeah, then yeah. I'd be happy. Yeah, they'd yeah. be happy. And they, like, and and so the, the, you know your fitness decreases to an extent. Um, your mental fitness decreases to an extent when you're isolated. You know when you don't have any social contact. And the same kind of goes for dogs. They're social animals. They need social contact. And patting them on the head, it's probably quite good for them. That's really interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Mm. All right. I'm yeah. going to pat some dogs. Or, go, yeah, moral of the story, <laughs> go pet a dog. Go pet a dog. Otherwise, you're basically trapping them in a room on their own forever. Is that the moral of the story? If you don't pat dogs, you're putting them in isolation? You know what? I'm going to move on because I don't want to touch that with a 10-foot pole. They might feel like they're in isolation. Mm. So, mm. some examples of pro-social behavior. Um, and I, again, I'm just going to read this verbatim. Sharing, comforting, cooperating, helping, rescuing, and donating. Those are all pos positive behaviors um, that help others. Right. Uh, and again, I, I need to be clear. Pro-social behavior is basically a sort of positive action to another organism, an action that benefits another organism. And it, it doesn't matter what the intent is. Right. Whether it's a selfish intent or whether it's a selfless intent, anything that is beneficial to another organism that one organism does, that is pro-social behavior. So um, altruism is uh, something that's motivated by a sort of genuine desire to benefit um sort of something else or someone else right mm. that's altruism when when it's you you're thinking there like i want to help blue cow Thanks. i'm gonna do this thank you mm. that's altruism cool right so that um, comes with the intent yeah okay. and that's without any expectation Fine. of anything so if i if i say do you know what luke seems like luke needs a phone and i'm just gonna give luke a phone and then stop speaking to him forever oh thank you there you go I'll take there's it. nothing to me because i enjoy speaking to luke i like it yeah you know, surprisingly, I do. <laughs> and so if I was to decide, here's the phone and I'm going to stop speaking to you forever, I'm not getting anything out of that. You know, if anything, I'm losing. I'm getting two things out of it. Thanks, Luke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a bit nicer. Maybe, maybe you want to be a, a bit nicer to the guy that's giving you a phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've not done it yet. Well, yeah, I'm not, I'm, maybe I won't do it at all. Maybe I'm not an altruistic <laughs> person. Uh, no, so you, you understand that you understand what's going on here. Pro-social mm. behavior is uh, is just positive behavior to someone else. Um, and empathy. Um, empathy is this sort of... What do you think empathy is? The ability to sort of create emotions that somebody else is feeling that you aren't necessarily feeling. Uh, like like you could empathize with somebody's loss and you actually get a genuine feeling of loss even though you mm. haven't lost anything. Yeah, mm. yeah, absolutely. So empathy is this sort of, yeah, simulated feeling of someone else or basically feeling someone else's feelings. And that is um, one of the things that motivates people towards pro-social behavior. If I see Jamp looking all sad because someone ate Jamp's plums <gasps> and I would see Jamp and I'd have no. a lot of plums myself and I would feel bad. And... The only thing I could do to stop that bad feeling is to give Jamp some plums. Do you have some plums? I actually do have plums downstairs. So in that sense, you're actually, <laughs> to a certain extent, selfishly motivated towards pro-social behavior by an empathy response because actually you don't want to feel the bad thing. Yeah, to an extent, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Or because you want to feel a good thing, right? Yeah. It can feel good to do something nice for someone else and mm -hmm. there's a sort of empathetic thing there, right? Because empathy doesn't necessarily need to be... Um, always negative right mm. and empathy empathy could be a positive thing as well yeah 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 so yeah. we understand what empathy empathy is we understand what pro-social behavior is yeah good so let's jump into the experiment now i've got this one experiment that you might have heard of it's been popping up on twitter um quite a bit um and it's to do with rats do you have any guess what this experiment is yes i well i i did see a thing about basically like 
an experiment that was like if a rat can help another rat yes. get out of something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Let's not go any further on that okay. because I've got the whole experiment laid out. <laughs> it's the whole episode. It's the whole episode. <laughs> there is nothing else to this. So let's <laughs> gonna cut you off right there <laughs> before you say another word. <laughs> so yeah. So this this is um this is an experiment. Uh, the, the 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 sort of title of the experiment, the title of the paper is "Empathy and Prosocial Behavior in Rats." It was published in 2011 in Science. Um and it, it it kind of talks about you know how human prosocial behavior is driven by empathy, but it's unclear whether that is uh, present in other animals, particularly mammals, like you know like non-human primates and other mammals. And obviously, a rat model is something that's very easy to like you know sort of study. We know a lot about rats compared to many other animals. We can simulate sort of depression in rats. We can do a lot with rats, right? They're very easy to work with. So we thought, why not look at rats? So. Essentially, this the study was to sort of to um, look to see if um, a rat would want to help another rat out, um, even if there was no benefit to itself, right? If it would empathetically be driven to do something for another rat, right. which it, we'll we'll get to it, right? It's 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 a little less cut and dry than you might think. But mm. personally, having had rats, I would say mm, I'm on the fence. Are they bastards? No. Yes, a little bit. Oh. A little bit. Like, I mean, one, literally, yes, because their parents aren't married. And two... Uh, <laughs> you don't know that. You mean some of them have I, I married parents? Well, I checked. What? Oh, okay. No, no, no. None of them have married. I'm sure none okay, of the rats okay, have married parents. No, but they're still... It's the rule bastards. Exactly. Yeah, wow. absolutely. It's, it's just an ingrained thing about being... No, but like also, the rat... I mean, I guess the rats that I've had never had to want for anything. And so they had no, they had no reason not to steal from each other. And stand on each other's heads, and you know, <laughs> generally just be not very yeah. <laughs> just like us when we're not recording side guys. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, steal like and standing. That's our thing. But also, uh, if you picked one of them up and they didn't want to be picked up, the other two would kind of come and see what was going on. They'd be like, "Hey, don't do that." Maybe, but right. again, Sorry. they're rats. They're tiny. There's nothing they can do. So, um... <laughs> <laughs> except flip you off. Well, the tiny rat. They can't even do that. Their fingers are too small. Um, you wouldn't even be able to see it. Uh, so, so this is built on research. Uh, so this this study is built on research into rats and social contagion. Um, so essentially, it was uh, this this is a study called I think the emotional reaction of rats to the pain of others from 1959. Um, and essentially, uh, they they gave some rats electric shocks, and uh, w and wanted to see. Uh, w what happened to the other the other rats if they gave if they gave some rats electric oh, shocks dear. specifically um <laughs> i'm pretty sure um they had I, th I think this is a study wherein they had rats press a press like a sort of button or whatever to get some snacks mm -hmm. and it also gave the other rats an electric shock oh oh yeah, when you press the button. God, there's some flipping psychopaths working in the science fields. <laughs> so, yeah, and so obviously... Let's set up a game where... But it's for science! It's for science, but I'm going to feed one rat while torturing another one and let them see it. Well, no, you're not feeding the rat. You're not, sorry, you're not feeding or torturing the rat. The, the, one of the rats is They're doing torturing, it. Well, the torturing yeah, one of the rats, the rat gets to press its own button to shock another rat and feed itself. Oh. Yeah. And so the idea is, would they, would they like want to shock oh. the other rat less? And yeah, so rats... Um, basically, rats... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> rats will shock other rats less um, and they're also and actually also there's um there are sort of they also looked at signs of sort of depression in rats i think it was sort of like learned helplessness like that sort of thing and there were lower signs of that in rats that um in rats that were sort of shocking other rats if that makes sense Hang on. There was lower signs of depression. No, no, sorry. There were, sorry, other right. There were lower signs. Oh, uh, wait, hold on. Let me, let me. How do you cure depression? Electrocute your friends. <laughs> Ooh, rats basically uh, felt better when there weren't rats around them being shocked. No, there were there were some. There were some. Um... I also would feel better if there wasn't like, rats around me getting shocked. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like a surprised rat. There's nothing worse than that. No. Um. <laughs> Shocked. Yeah, I understood the joke. I just didn't appreciate it. <laughs> Insensitive. <laughs> it was. It was over. I think Corey is quite enjoying torturing us, and maybe he'll get some food for it himself too. Sixty. It was sixty-three years ago. This study. Those rats would be long dead now anyway. I don't think it matters well, how much they were shocked. I don't dead. know, in the man. Long run. Probably. That's a pretty dying. poor, <laughs> <laughs> pretty poor opinion you've got there. <laughs> I'm so, gonna electrocute well, you and go, well, he'll anyway. be dead eventually, so it doesn't matter. I mean, like, in, you know, in a hundred years or something, I don't think it's it's worth, you know, oh, was Corey, was Corey shocked by loot? Doesn't matter that much. Shock me. 
in a hundred years when I'm dead. He'll also be dead. Exactly. So I've got nothing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> so that that is that is the kind of like the background of this. They were um, trying to see if there are em- if, if there's empathy in rats. So they put rats together in pairs uh, for two weeks before they started testing. Um, so you got you got them getting uh, sort of getting acclimated to each other, becoming little. You make them friends before you make them shock each other. <laughs> Oh, this is so. This is so. This isn't the shock <laughs> experiment. This is this is the 2011 oh, this, experiment. This is a separate thing. Okay, yeah. fine. I mean, although I hope they did make them friends okay, before they fine. shot each other. One for scientific integrity, not because I want to see rat friends shock each other. It makes it sadder. It does make it a little sadder, but yeah. it means the results are that little bit more robust, doesn't it? And that's all that matters. <laughs> it's not only the rat getting hurt; it's also the friendship. <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> wow, you it's made two this. things died. The rats didn't die. They were shocked, not like... They did eventually, and like... you've made that clear. <laughs> Every... <laughs> Doesn't matter if they didn't die, Corey. <laughs> what I mean is that I'm fairly sure they did not die from the shocks in the experiment. I can't say for certain, I'm just fairly sure. Yeah. Okay, so uh, in the 2011 experiment, the the empathetic rat experiment, Okay. they put the rats together for two weeks before the start. they started um, the tests. Um, and in... Each uh, in each session, they had a rat, and they put them in. And this is the free rat. They put the rat in a sort of like a little sort of um, space, a little area, an arena. It says in the paper, um, and it has the a center. Yeah, in the center of the little arena. Gladiators. <laughs> kind of, fight. kind of. Okay, so I, I don't want to say cage. In the in the center of sort of like an enclosure, right? And in in the center of the enclosure was this sort of little. Rat cage, yeah. Rat restrainer, yeah. Like little tiny rat box. Mm. Um, and uh, there is in in that restraint. I'm sure <laughs> you can rat guess. Will see you now. I'm sure you can guess is a trapped rat. No you know? way. Yeah. So in the, the rat restrainer, there is a rat. Yeah. Restrained. Yes. Wow. Incredible. And the free rat has the power to free the trapped rat. <laughs> wow. By, like, this is the worst <laughs> game show. Really bad restraints. By by. <laughs> If a rat can get you out of restraints, it's a pretty bad restraint. Well, but you're also a rat. It's well, not like I'm a rat, rat can get me out of restraints. This feels like Saw, but for rats. <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. And so to get the other rat out, um, the free rat can the free rat can <laughs> basically uh, tip over the door by um, a, like f- forcing it open, um, usually with its head sort of thing. So it can mm. just kind of tip open, tip, tip open the door with its head. Um, obviously, you can't do that from inside the restraint, but the free rat is able to do it from the outside. So... Um, they, they, they were sort of, um, if the rat couldn't open the door, the experimenter would then open the door halfway, um, which would let the, the trapped rat out. Um, and that would be, basically they did that to stop the rats getting depressed. Oh. Yeah. It doesn't say that. It says, um, it, 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 <laughs> it says, allowing the trapped rat to escape and preventing learned helpness, helplessness. Yeah. The, stopping the rats from getting depressed. Yeah. Which, it's nice. That's good. Out of interest, is there any way that they have ruled out... Um, now, obviously, I'm remembering your pro-social behavior definition um, is important here uh, because this would be irrelevant to whether they have pro-social behavior, but whether they have empathy is like... Um, for example, does the other rat... Is, is, is the trapped rat squeaking a lot and the other rat could be finding that annoying? We'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. Ooh. That's a good, that's a very, I'm glad you brought that up. That's a Thanks. very smart thing to bring up. Um, so, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Stop it. Fine, we'll get you out. Shut up. <laughs> 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 well, that's, that would be pro-social behavior because yeah, it, be. it be does benefit the other rat. Yeah. It doesn't matter the intent. It's because yeah. I'm annoyed, annoyed with you. <laughs> so they repeat these sessions for 12 days. Uh, imagine being, by the way, the trapped rat. Every day you wake up and you're just trapped again. Oh, and you've got, you've got your rat friend. And sometimes they're just not letting you out. It's like that film. What's that film with Tom Hanks where he Groundhog wakes up on the day. same day? Yeah, Groundhog Day. Grand, that's, with, Grand that's, with, that's not with Tom Hanks. What? I think it is with no, Tom Hanks. Ja- ja- Bill Murray. <gasps> is it, it is Murray? a Bill Murray. Yeah. It's absolutely with Bill Murray. <laughs> I came from a universe in which it was Tom Hanks. So. No, you didn't. I don't think any. I don't think Tom Hanks has been in any time loop movie. No, no. But I came from a different parallel universe in which Tom Hanks has been. Okay. Cool. <laughs> if right. I watch Forrest Gump on repeat, then he is in a time loop movie. That's, That's... true. <laughs> you go in there, Jam. Good work. It's I just keep pressing start chapter, start chapter again, start <laughs> chapter again, start <laughs> chapter again. And then you let him do two chapters, and you're like, Ooh, oh, progression. Just to just to yeah. edge him a little bit. He's learning. <laughs> he thinks he's getting ahead, and oh, back at oh, the start no. again. Yeah. So Rad back force. to the rats. Yeah. 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 
cool. So uh, they also marked the three rats' heads and recorded their movements to see what they were doing. Um, see what, where, the, where they were going, sort of thing, you know, like where they, where they were spending their time. Um, and they also uh, they also had a control. Um, so uh, they, they had free rats with empty restrainers and um, free rats with um, an unrestrained cage mate um, like across, basically separated from them. Did they have uh, free rats with a trapped rat who is unable to be saved? Jesus, Luke, no. <laughs> well, that, I mean, that's a control of what sorts. Is, no, it's not. That, that, is, that, is, that is not a... What is... A, okay, hold on. What is that controlling for? Uh, whether the, rat, the free rat... Just like pressing the door um, near a restrained rat. (laughs) (laughs) What I'm saying is... They kind of tested for that afterwards, (laughs) so... Sure. God damn, I don't like you today. <laughs> you're really, you're, you're bugging me. <laughs> so there's nothing worse than someone being silly, but also being like technically kind of correct. A, yeah, kind like of technically right. correct. Uh, <laughs> so the the free rats spent um, uh, apparently more time near the restrainer, um, and uh, they had they moved faster than the control rats did. Uh, and the control rats obviously um, not having a trapped rat with them like that that was the control basically obviously mm-hmm. one uh, one set of controls had no restrained rat in the in the sort of uh, had no rats anywhere in in the rest of the cage um, and the um, the other control rats had um, a, another rat but like sort of separated them from them by a divide but you know a not trapped rat so um, the the control rats obviously um, weren't moving as quickly and didn't spend as much time next to the restrainer so. Right. Luke, for you there, um, the rats didn't just like the restrainer. They they were trying to. It, it mm. seems that they were at least trying to help the cage mate out um, of the restraint. The reason behind it, we'll get to that in a bit. Uh, so uh, they also they also learned um, the, the rats learned to open the door better, and they would uh, the sort of latency between them being put in the enclosure and them letting the the sort of trapped rat out uh, decreased uh, as the as the experiment went on, which is pretty cool. It means essentially what, what you can infer from that that um, they were intending to do it, mm. um, and they were basically learning um, how best to open the door. So I think the best way for them to do it was to sort of nudge it with their head. Um, and I think by the end, most of them ended up doing that. And also, interestingly, um, uh, is that they, they they classed rats by as openers, um, sort of by the end of the experiment, if they were um, capable of doing it, like mm-hmm. um, sort of consistently and and quickly and well um and 23 out of 30 of the rats um in the trap in the sort of the trapped rat experiments um uh were openers why so there was like no no as it, so 23 out of 30 yeah. of the free rats yeah um that were so basically there were seven things. real mean rats but yeah just or maybe they were just bad at help. opening <laughs> yeah. right or yeah. bad at opening yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah no. so there were 23 out of 30 that were classed as openers and in the control there were only five out of 40 that were classed as openers so there were five in the oh, control wow. that were just Bloody loved opening that thing. <laughs> yeah, look, like, I'll tell you this. Some of them got trapped themselves. <laughs> <laughs> From what I know about rats, like, yeah, they like weird stuff. Like, one of the rats like liked spit, but well, two of the rats liked spit, and one of them did not did not care for it. I didn't feed them spit. Oh uh, yeah, I have literally in this house watched. Uh, I can't remember if it was you or Noah. Like, lick your finger and go over to the rat, and the rat will like enjoy Ew. licking your spit off. Of... How did you find Ew. that out? I don't know. Ask Noah. I will do. And also, you've, I'm certain you fed the rat spit. No, I didn't feed the rat spit. You sure? Yeah. Hmm. You can feed the rat spit if you want. Thank you. Well, there's only one left, so. Yeah. Does he like spit? Yeah, he loves spit. Great. Yeah. yeah and I, <laughs> honestly, I think that's my, that might be what's keeping him going. Well, honestly. you know what I'm doing after this episode? <laughs> Feeding a rat spit. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> The worst part is when you have your, part of any of this. The worst part is when you've got your mouth open near them and they quickly dive in. <laughs> and oh take my god, it, a gold mine. And take, it, <laughs> and take it straight from the source because <laughs> their head just fits right in your mouth. Like, like it's a perfect um. little size. And that's another reason that um fancy rats never ever set them free. Because they they are not built to survive. No. They are so stupid. They're very smart, but like they have no survival. Imagine going into another creature's mouth that's bigger than you. <laughs> just, just diving on in there, <laughs> like. Can I have a look at your spit, sir? So, Mac, do the the trap rat experiments. Um, uh, so you, that is, you kind of you kind of got the um you kind of got the, the 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 gist of that sort of first uh course of experiments there. Um, they also uh recorded uh the sounds 
um, of of the rats using an ultrasonic bat detector, um, <laughs> presumably stolen from Batman. I, I guess. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, no. So it was an ultrasonic detector. Um, it, it is literally a bat detector, but obviously, if they're using ultrasonic sound waves, it doesn't really matter what animal it's coming from. No. Detect anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it can detect any ultrasonic sound wave. So. They they used that to sort of uh, test to see uh, what was going on with the rats, what they were um, what they were saying to each other, sort of thing. Um, and uh, there were more alarm calls uh, recorded during the trapped condition, thirteen percent, than during the empty and uh, object conditions, three to five percent, uh, because there were obviously the conditions where they put um, just an object in the cage, in the trapped cage. More alarm calls, but the alarm calls, some alarm calls, still came from the free rat in the control. Yeah, I mean rats are skittish. What do you mean by a lot? Are they just going, ah? Oh, uh, I should point ah, out as well. Some of, them, right. some of them were, oh, this is another thing. Um, this they, It goes on to say this as well. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, 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 the sort of the, the, the cage that the rats were in, the sort of mm. door um, the, the, uh, that was to sort of the, the restraint, mm. um, that would sometimes shock the rats a little bit. When they oh, were, what? No, 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 okay, no, no, no. Well, not, well, like, not, 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 not like electric shock, like um, scare them a little bit oh. with the noise. Oh. Yeah, they'd give them a little bit of a, little bit of a start. Right. Cause it, yeah, because yeah. it, it makes a noise. And they're like, whoa, what's that? <laughs> uh, but that decreased. Oh, so with the um, with the trapped rat condition, basically with the rats that had um, a, a rat trapped in the restraint, um, that happened less over time. Uh, so it showed that they knew what they were doing because they weren't scared of opening the door anymore. They knew that they were nudging the door with their face in order to open the door to free the rat. Did the trapped rats squeak uh, less over time because they knew that the other rat would come save them. I don't have information on that. Um, I would expect so. Oh wait, no, yes. Hold on. Alarm com uh, alarm calls occurred more frequently, um, uh, twenty to twenty seven percent on days one to three when door opening was rare, um, and in ninety percent of files containing alarm calls on day one, the trap rat was identified as the source. In the remaining samples, we were not able to identify the caller. Um, this data. Um, <laughs> I love reading scientific papers sometimes. <laughs> These data suggest that the trap rats were indeed stressed. Yeah. 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 You think? Well, you might, maybe. <laughs> yeah. So they got a lot of, they, they, uh, what's, I think what's quite good about this is they got quite a lot of data on mm. this. Like they, they thought of a lot of, um, basically all these questions that you're asking, they have they kind of thought of the answers to them. Um, and more of the female rats, this is interesting, more of the female rats um, than the male rats. So six out of six female rats um, compared to 17 out of 24 male rats um, in the trapped condition be became door openers. Um, and it says that that's consistent with the suggestions that females are more empathetic than males. I assume in rats. Um, I don't know if they're trying to say that. <laughs> just but across the board. Just all females. <laughs> all, the <time. laughs> all the time. Absolutely. That's, how, that's actually how you determine what's a, what's a male and what's a female. Absolutely. Chromosomes, yeah. blah. No, empathy. Empathy level. Yeah. <laughs> empathy level, that's it. I mean... Ugh. A new biological marker for, for biological sex. That kind of is a gender thing, though. You know, men are taught to be less empathetic than women. Or just well, feel less rat, emotions. But rat men are not taught to be less empathetic than <laughs> rat you, women. Look, what are you... Are you trying to create rat men? Is that the whole spit-swapping <laughs> thing you got going on there? Are you creating, like, a race of super-powered rat people? Yeah, to get me out of a cage when I get trapped. <laughs> <laughs> Oddly squeak, specific. Like a, like a Bond <laughs> villain. Squeak, squeak, squeak. <laughs> Oddly specific use case, but honestly, I'm not going <laughs> to question it. I get trapped in a cave somewhere. <laughs> Don't worry, everyone. I'm going to call my rat man brigade. <laughs> rat <laughs> man. <laughs> just Snow White, but just rats. <laughs> Help me. But it is, it is a human with a, a rat's head. The size of a rat's head. On his body. I like Mr. Rat. I'm not telling you because no, 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 because that's a that's a, that's a human. That, that's a Mr. Rat has a has a rat's head, but yes. it's the size of a human head. Oh. I'm talking a human with a rat's head. The size, the size of, a, of a rat's the head. The size of a rat's it's head. Actually, the other like way, some it's, it's, level. It's his rat body with a with a full <laughs> size <laughs> human oh, head. No, that is infinitely <laughs> worse. Drag <laughs> itself along no. backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, how are you going to save me from this trap? What doors are does, you opening? Yeah, it uh, does somehow. You know, sometimes people comment saying that this podcast is too full of nonsense, that they don't get enough facts. And I say, damn it, there are tons of facts. You just got to wade through the nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop <laughs> or, listening. Or better yet, you know, wade through the facts to get to all this fun nonsense. Yeah. Which is the real, really, the real reason for this podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Good. Back to the rats. So, as I've said, uh, the females seem to be more empathetic than the males. Again, there's only six females that were tested in this and only 24 males that were tested, so I don't know if we can extrapolate this out to all rats, but 
in this experiment, at least the females seem to be more empathetic than the males, uh, which is interesting. Um, I mean, I guess if I was to pull an explanation for that out, out from anywhere, males are maybe a little bit more fighty with each other than females are. But yeah, then again, I can't let the rat out. It might fight me. Exactly. Um, there's there's a dominant thing. There, but what then there's still dominance it... between female rats as well. So it, it, yeah. it's, tough, it's uh, tough to say. I would yeah. love to know if there was a, like, if, if you did a big enough study, whether there was a difference between the number of female rats male rats would let out and the number of male rats female rats would let out. Well, look, all we need to do is get a lot of rats. Well, yeah. And they're very easy to get. Yeah, they're really cheap. They're so cheap. And mm. also, they just make more. Yeah. Like, they make more super quick. Unlimited rats. Like, you don't even need to do anything. <laughs> you can literally just put two together, and in, like, yeah. two weeks, Feed them some you'll, have, like, you'll, have, like, you'll have, like, ten more. Yeah. And then if you keep on leaving them together, they just exponentially grow out. Yeah. Mitosis. Yeah, well, you, you have three billion rats. Much. Yeah, you just drop some food in there every now and then, <laughs> and, like, suddenly you've got more rats. It's like magic, honestly. So, the next question they can have had was, is there something else affecting this? Is the sort of rate of opening affected by boldness of the rats? So they thought, okay, let's take some rats. Let's see how bold they are. Make them fight. No. That's how you test boldness, is it not? No. Okay. No, that's not how you test boldness. How you test boldness is actually, I think, um, a lot more interesting. Uh, there was a ledge test. Um, <laughs> Gosh. Yeah. They just, like it's a just cliff. Like, it's just like jumping between high places. I mean, well, no, no, no. Just, just a ledge. So they're... <laughs> Sorry, this is just really ridiculous. Um, uh, they basically just had some ledges, uh, and they test to see how, um, like, how quickly the rats would be able to, to overcome the ledge, and that's it. When that's you say overcome, overcome the ledge, what do you Hop mean? Down it. Jump down. Yeah. Oh, I see. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's it's that. It's just silly. Well, that's yeah. not necessarily a test for boldness. It can also be a test for stupidity. What if they're no. committing suicide? <laughs> it's not that high. Depression. Yeah, yeah. Depression, depression. It could be depression. Rats can fall a really long, a really, really far distance and be fine. It's not. It, they could also not be fine. No, no. Okay. Again, I I've seen a rat jump off of a, like a five foot cage. Um, but if they'll be, if they know they'll be fine, is that really boldness? Mm, yeah, because true. it's still. It's. I mean, the, it's actually a test of knowledge yeah. of terminal velocity. <laughs> 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 They're actually gravitational geniuses. <laughs> so we'll about the nice what I'm saying haircuts. is that your conclusion that this is a test for boldness is not necessarily the only conclusion. Okay, so let me go more in depth on this. It's <laughs> okay. to the ledge of a half-opened cage, right? So it's basically to see how long it would take for them to approach that ledge. Rather than approach the ledge, yeah. Rather than jump okay. off it, yeah. Oh, okay. For right. them to approach the ledge and then see what they're doing there. If they're like, "Oh, I'm scared to go." So it's a there. test for whether you're scared of heights, which is directly linked to boldness. <laughs> 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 okay, you know what? Let's stop the episode here. I'm so sorry. You two, tell me how you would test boldness in rats. I, Make them fight. I wouldn't. No, no, no. I want Jamp to start off. I wouldn't. No, no, no. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I would do something yeah. else. Give me, give me I, I'd, go. I'd simply ask them. <laughs> I see. And please, on a scale of one to ten, how bold would you consider like, bear yourself? Bear in mind, Jeff. That's Jeff, called qualitative Jeff. data, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. We have a we have a rat downstairs. So if you if you are going to stand behind asking a rat how bold it is, we can fully te we can test that right here and now. Well, if the rat doesn't answer me, it must be pretty bold to have the the cheek <laughs> and the audacity to ignore a creature that's much larger than it. <laughs> I'm with Jam on this. <laughs> that is a perfect test. It doesn't test for anything else. <laughs> the gall and the gumption. I am such a creature. <laughs> such a majestic <laughs> creature as myself. I don't know how this episode got so silly. I don't know where it came from. Well, I mean... Well, this you, is about rats saving each other. Yeah, it's about <laughs> rats being trapped in saving each other from and restrained. restraint. <laughs> I don't know how this episode got so silly. <laughs> <laughs> so the researchers, yeah. researchers a hundred years ago used to create devices that allowed rats to electrocute each other whilst getting a snack. That when was, did this episode get silly? That was 60 <laughs> years ago. Well, I'm so sorry. And so, Luke, you were talking about the squeals of the rat and see if that was going to be affecting it, right? Yes. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about something slightly different. I'm going to talk about... What the um, heck was that? That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Just keeping you on your toes. Wow. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna talk about um, the uh, sort of social interaction because they want to see oh are the rats freeing the other rats just because they want to hang out with them. Is oh. that, yeah yeah. Um, 
well, they, they decided to test for that. So what they did was they had a different setup wherein the rat could free the other rat, but then they couldn't hang out. It yep. was just they were just slightly separated. Great work. Um, and, and they still they still let them out. They still oh, that's did. That's nice. Yeah. So they did this for, um, I think, gosh, uh, 20, 29 days um, of testing. But um, uh, there were some, there were three rats that didn't open the door on any of the last three days of testing. I'm sick of this. Um, and then they weren't tested any further. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, this uh, is futile. You're just going to end up back in there anyway. Their yeah. mum was called and they yeah. came to pick them up. <laughs> okay, so okay, so hold on. Uh, I sh- I, I, let me let me go b- over this again. Quick so there were twelve coming. Hide in the restraints. No, no, I need to talk about. It. Okay, so sorry. there were twelve. There were twelve pairs of rats, um, and they were they were exposed to the, the sort of that trapped condition over twelve days. Um, and three of the rats didn't open the door in any of the last three days, so they stopped with them. Um, and then they used the new setup for um, twenty nine days. Um, the new setup being you could if you let the rat out, you go somewhere else, and you don't get to hang out, right? <clears throat> so um they they tested that um and then they um then they reversed it so that uh the rats that were in the separated cage mate condition were then tested in the separated um empty condition and vice versa right so they basically swapped the control rats with the non control rats um to see what would happen you, right. you know what i mean the tra- the trapped rats became the freeing rats no no, no. so they so, no. so there were so the control being remember um there was just an empty cage oh i see so they swapped itself. the rats with the yeah. empty cage um, with the rats that had a trap trap, mm. right? Mm. Is this making sense? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is this making sense? Let me know in the comments. Did they have to pair Did up you? the control rats with another control rat to become friends? I think all of the rats were just paired with other rats, um, and then they oh previously, and then some of them went on to just be alone. I think well because they were swapping the control yeah. rats between. I, I think they just. Okay. I, I, it doesn't actually explicitly say there. Cool. Um, they had to, I think they already they just paired up a bunch of rats. There were rat pairs, and they had them working in pairs. And when they wanted them to be controls, obviously they weren't working in pairs, they so just they just separate. separated them. Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Good. It, looking at this, uh, essentially, uh, what they found was that um, with the uh, sort of um, with the separated cage mate condition, uh, they either continued um, or returned to opening the door at short latency, um, as they had in the trap condition. So they continued to let the rats out at a faster rate. Um, even though they couldn't hang out with them. Um, and like uh, conversely, um, when there was an empty restrainer, they, they they usually ended up kind of stopping opening it because there wasn't they weren't letting a rat out. You know, they'd open it for a bit and then they'd be like, this is pointless. Because they're trying to yeah. like yeah. figure out what it is and mm-hmm. then it's not interesting anymore because you know what it is. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that kind of indicates that they're not doing it just for social contact because rats do like social contact. You know, like it's like if you were lonely, and there was someone trapped, you'd be like, maybe they'll talk to me. <laughs> and you let them out. And then you can talk, you know? Yeah. But that's the only mm. reason you, you could might talk let to them without letting them out, to be fair. Maybe. That's true. Mm. Just shout. That's true. Through the bars. They only let through screams. Uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Help. Help. <laughs> it's not a very good scream. I was trying to do it like a tiny rat scream. Help. That's, I hate that. I would not help so that. Much. That's I hate horrifying. That. that is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that is awful. No. No, no, stop that. You're staying in the cage. <laughs> Jeez, I would honestly put you out of my misery, <laughs> I think. Genuinely. You get another ca- put a cage in a cage. <laughs> I'd let you out, but only in the version where I didn't get to hang out with you. <laughs> right, go away. Well, there's, a, there's a ledge nearby that you push it up. <laughs> um, and they also, so this is this is uh, coming towards the end of their experiment. Mm-hmm. They, they did something else. They wanted to see uh, what the value of the sort of letting the cage mate out was, right? You want to see, how much do you actually care about doing this? So they got some chocolate chips. Of course. Because rats love some but chocolate chips. they were doing chips. it for free before. <laughs> yeah. So, no, no, so they got some chocolate chips, right? Yeah. Listen, Sorry. listen here. Yeah. Okay. So they... <laughs> oh. So what they had, uh, they had some chocolate chips. Um, and uh, they had, the, they had they had like a choice between um, uh, essentially... Uh, I mean, letting the rats out first, or letting the other rat out first, or having the chocolate oh. to themselves, right? Um, and obviously, there were a bunch of controls um, being like, you know, uh, chocolate with like um, no rest- uh, chocolate with no restrained rat, um, and, and all that sort of stuff, yeah. right? Uh, so uh, there was uh, there were two restrainers in this in this experiment. One of them had five chocolate chips in. Ooh. The other 
had a trapped rat in, right? <laughs> could they still could they still free both of them? It yeah, so they about, could free both of them. Just the order, mm, just the order, the order and, and kind of how they how they how they act. What are you okay. picking, Jamp? Um, well, I'm not a rat. Well, so. <laughs> if Luke was trapped in a in a restraint, and there were also five chocolate chips trapped in a restraint, <laughs> which would you choose to open first? Um, Bear in mind, would you like some chocolate chips? These are not vegan chocolate chips. Oh, they're not. Well, I'll go Luke then. Really? Ah, thanks. Let's still get the chocolate chips first. Might be useful. (laughs) (laughs) Currency. You can wait. (laughs) I'll make you some chocolate chips if you let me out. We're in a we're in a restraint. I want to get those chocolate chips first. I don't trust you. Were you going to take them from me? Huh? Want to share my chocolate chips? No. I'll take them first, and then you can can come out. Okay. Wow. Remember the bit where uh, where pro-social behavior feels good and sharing is nice? (laughs) Hey, I'll decide whether to share once I've let you out. Okay. Once you've had your chocolate chips. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to eat those chocolate chips. I'm saving them oh, okay. in case I need them. Okay. Right? For me. Mm-hmm. No. Maybe. Okay. Just not going to let you make that decision, okay? I'm going to keep it to myself. I don't trust you. So what did the rats do? Did they choose the chocolate buttons or did they choose Luke? <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Luke rat. I don't remember being in this. <laughs> but... Uh, it was tw- it was 11, 11 years, years ago. ago yeah I blocked it out <laughs> yeah. Yeah. kept getting chocolate chips picked instead of me <laughs> imagine right so Weird, you know, my memory starts a lot of people ago. have the experience of being picked last in gym class you yeah. know or being not being picked mm. in school yeah. Luke was picked last by rats many many times over some chocolate buttons yeah I was yeah. also picked in gym class last over some chocolate buttons as well <laughs> It was just a yeah. team of chocolate buttons against me <laughs> playing basketball. Yeah, I want my goalie to be a these chocolate do- buttons, please. <laughs> Game of dodgeball, and you're just up against a team of chocolate buttons. Yeah, <laughs> and he's still lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're very hard to hit, aren't they? They are. Yeah. <laughs> so, in this in this experiment with the restraint full of chocolate, five chocolate chips, I say full. The restraint with what five chocolate chips. What do you mean a restraint full of five chocolate? It's the chips. same restraint. I'm imagining it like. Well, it's like a little it's room. A, it's with like a door. harness. It's the and, same. No, it's yeah. the same restraint that the right. other rat is in. It's okay. just a little box. Okay. They just have like to push, a little rat trap. They have to push the door. Open. Oh, they push the door open, then they can get the chocolate chips. Yeah. yeah, it's the same restraint that the other rat is in. Yeah, they've yeah. got to do the same thing with the, with the door. Yeah. Um, but in in the chocolate chip case, instead of. It, like you know, a rat coming out. Yeah, they can just pop in and get some chocolate chips. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. We all we all understand. So it's equally easy to get into. It's the same restraint. Yeah, it's just that in one case there's a rat, and in the other case there's five chocolate chips. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So, in this experiment, um, they there there wasn't um either for it, for the rats that had the chocolate chip, um, and the rat the other rats are trapped in the, mm. in, in the restraints um there was no difference in the door opening latencies for the two restrainers during days six to twelve um and and um in the in contrast the rats in the chocolate empty condition so the rats that had one restraint with chocolate in it and the other restraint being empty um opened the chocolate containing restrainer far more quickly than the empty one so in in the basically if there was a rat trapped and a chocolate and, and chocolate chips trapped um the latency um was Roughly the same for the first, uh, right? Uh, for this, uh, so for, on average, on in the last rats few days, value another rat versus five chocolate chips roughly the same on the last six to 12 days, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, That's quite sad. And mm. but hold on, what what is inter- what? And so, what that says is that, um, is that yeah, so that like the value of freeing a friend and getting some chocolate are roughly the same. And bear in mind, rats bloody love they love chocolate a lot. Could the rat that was freed get to the chocolate chips? So yeah, if you freed the rat first, if you freed the other rat first, you, they, you both basically had access to get the chocolate chips. And something that's interesting here, um, <laughs> uh, this is this is really cool. Um, that you know, if they if they got the chocolate first, obviously they could just eat all the chocolate, mm. right? And these weren't these rats were fed. These weren't starved rats. They made sure that they were fully fed. Yeah. They weren't hungry rats. There's always room for chocolate buttons. Though. There's always room for chocolate. There's always room. There's always room for little chocolate chip. <laughs> I'll tell you this: a rat can be not hungry, right? Yeah. Well, you know, as soon as you bring out the chocolate buttons, oh. I swear to God, oh my God, there yeah. like the number of times the rats found chocolate and just demolished it. Like <laughs> I've seen so many pictures that Noah's taken. Well, there was Christmas chocolate. There was one year we got Christmas chocolate sent, and like you know, Noah puts them down in the room, and he comes in the next day, and it's just it's just a rat, like a big fat rat covered There's in chocolate. So many pictures of like a rat with like chocolate around its mouth. That is, <laughs> there is a specific <laughs> picture of Alfie looking real fat. <laughs> Being held like yeah. being grabbed that's like this around the middle of. with me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> it's uh, getting rats <laughs> away from chocolate is a tough thing. Yeah. So, 
obviously, if they opened the chocolate chip restraint first, they could have all the chocolate chips they wanted. But um, they found that the rats with, a, with the, you know, if there is another rat trapped as well, so if in the rats in the chocolate cage mate condition, condition um, they would save on average about one of the five chocolate chips for the other rat. Wow. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. And obviously in the chocolate chip empty condition, they just ate all the chocolate chips. I on see. Yeah. They, 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 so... Um, uh, so, uh, like the the actual numbers here are that um, in fifty two percent of the trials, um, they shared uh, they shared some chocolate chips. Um, in um, I think that was in the the first few days, um, and in sixty one percent of the trials on days six to twelve, they shared um, they shared the chocolate chips. So they That's actually nice. were more likely to share um, towards the end of the experiment. And um, and the rats in the chocolate empty condition usually ate pretty much all the chips four point eight. Is the average sort of number of chocolate chips that were eaten um, when there was uh, just chocolate chips and an empty restraint? Um, but in yeah, as I said, in the free in the free condition, um, they ate fewer chips. So it was actually uh, three point five. Um, I think plus or minus one point five. Um, so uh, they basically let the other rats eat the remaining chips, which is roughly about like one and a half chips mm -hmm. they would leave. Which for a rat leaving one chocolate chip for yeah, another rat, pretty sensible. That is that's real nice, isn't yeah. it? You know when you're full. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're not. Full. They're never full, no, obviously. Yeah. But like, they're specifically leaving. I think that's really interesting that they're specifically leaving um, a chocolate chip for another rat to eat after they let them out. Nice. So they're they're planning like, okay, I'm gonna go and get these first, so my chocolate chips, and then I'll leave the one chocolate chip, and you can have that one once <laughs> I've let you back. I this out. for you. <laughs> <laughs> Luke, I found, I found, I found one chocolate chip. You can have it, my lovely friend, mm -hmm. since you have been trapped. What? I will sacrifice more this chocolate chip. <laughs> I will go chocolate chipless. <laughs> there were no cho there were no more chocolate chips. But you may have this one. <laughs> what is this on my face? You ask. <laughs> Feces. <laughs> I'm a rat. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I had to eat to save the chocolate chip for you. <laughs> um, I wish they did a version where saving the chocolate chips like opened a trap door, and the rat fell, and so I had to actually pick between chocolate chips or my friend. Wow. Why are you two making such cruel? I Expert, want like, a version where well, they can fall quite long. I want a version where there's two, there's two experiments. One, yeah. but in both the rats, there's a rat in the in the trap, and and there's also the chocolate chips. But in one of them, the uh, there is see through glass or see through plastic, mm. so the other rat can see and judge. And I want to <sighs> see if that if if rats have guilt uh, when when they are when they know the other rat knows and they then leave more chips. That's interesting. I my hypothesis on that is that rats don't have that kind of guilt. Well, well, let's run the experiment. Let's Corey. do it. Yeah. No, I yeah. mean that'd be really interesting. It'd be really interesting. I also think rats probably can't count to five. So no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. half of five is one rat. I'll give you one. <laughs> that's actually yeah. No, that's. I highly doubt rats can count to five. Did any of Not the rats? No, I think rats can probably count mm. to five. Fine. I think a rat could probably count to five. Well, we've got two five. experiments to do now, haven't we? No, whether I... rats can count to five, and also whether rats have guilt when they know the other person knows they're guilty. Yeah, I mean, it's but it's not. It isn't counting to five necessarily so much that it's just understanding a quantity of five. Yeah. Right. Like. I... Oh yeah, I just mean um, whether the other rat looking on uh, n will be able to tell the difference between like two or three or one, um, and hold that in memory, and then. Um, then we need to have another experiment for whether that other rat like is, gets petty about it. <laughs> Man, I think you just want to watch a bunch of rats, which I would recommend just getting I some I want to rats. watch a bunch of rats in a systematic way and draw conclusions. I want to be a scientist. Oh, wow. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you just want pet rats. You, yeah. you, you, you just want pet rats. Yeah, guy. true. I don't necessarily care about empirical data. I just want to watch them do things. Yeah, yeah. And then... And then Talk about it. Yeah, I saw yeah. my rat do this thing. Ooh, interesting. <laughs> well, you tell everyone that it's that it, that you're testing them, but actually you're just watching them do stuff. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> that's what I do. My rat got really guilty. <laughs> Did any of them share the chocolate chips and split the fifth one to have half each? I, I have you read a scientific paper? No. <laughs> yeah. Not one. Not one. Ever. Maybe half of one. <laughs> you split it. Yeah. With the rat. With, with, with the, the rat. rat. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, uh, tend not to have that kind of information in them, usually. Oh, well, they're quite thorough. Or so I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> Did any rats release the other rat and then the other rat went and ate all of the. It doesn't say that there. Okay, that's a shame. Uh, I'll just read the sort of like results or sort of discussion part. Um, 
So it says, our study demonstrates that rats behave, behave pro-socially when they perceive a con-specific experiencing non-painful psychological restraint stress. Um, essentially, what it's saying is rats do something nice for other rats when another rat feels bad. And there's no downside oh. and there's for them. No, and, yeah, there's no downside for them, but also there's no like physical harm coming to the other rat. This is like purely just a sort of yeah. psychological stress for the other rat, mm. right? That's what that's what it says. Um, um, and then it goes on to say, um, uh, non pay. So it says uh, it demonstrates that rats behave prosocially when they perceive a conspecific experiencing non painful psychological restraint stress, acting to end that stress. Uh, distress through deliberate action. In contrast to previous work, the present study shows pro-social behavior accomplished by the deliberate action of a rat. Moreover, this behavior occurred in the absence of training or social reward, and even when in competition with highly palatable food. <laughs> Sorry. I just I love that in experiments food. with rats, you've got to take into account the fact that they really love food. Yeah. <laughs> like a lot. Like, as in, we'll go for chocolate chips over <laughs> Yeah, letting someone else out. Yeah. That's just very... Who can blame them? I mean... Yeah, I did say I would do the same thing. <laughs> Probably, I'm going to stick by that. Sorry, buddy. Well, but you said you'd do the same thing if it was me trapped. You may do a different thing when it was anybody else. If it was a rat trapped, I would let the rat... No, I don't trust... No. I would only get the chocolate chips first so that I could give them to the rat and the rat would be friends with me. Uh, oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's, right. Is that pro-social behavior then? I'm not sure. It is pro-social behavior. Pro-social right, behavior okay. is regardless... It's, it's regardless it's not of empathy. the... Mm. There may be some empathy in there. Maybe no. a little bit. There is some empathy in there. It's just the overriding emotion is I want me to feel good and be a savior to the little rat. If he's specifically saving chocolate chips for the rat, for the no, rat no, to no. have a good experience. He's not he's saving chocolate chips so the rat will love him. That was very clear. <laughs> yeah. It's but not, he's going, not so that rat will be happy. I know the rat's going to enjoy this. So yes, and it. therefore it will love me. Yeah. Yeah. That is the overarching message there. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying it's not pure it's empathy. Not empathy. Ain't no. nothing wrong with that. The rat gets <laughs> love, and I get loved by rat. Uh, so, um, and they, obviously, there's a discussion. They they give some alternative explanations. As it says in the paper, they give some other reasons um, for the results that they might have seen, which is a standard thing that you do in paper. So I'll just read some of these out because um, you, I want, I want you to bear these in mind because it's kind of the topic of discussion I want to get to once once we finish this. So they said that the uh, rats might have acted to stop the alarm calls of the trapped rats. Uh, but the explanation for this is that apparently the sort of little little rat screams um, weren't frequent enough. They didn't happen often enough to support that idea. Mm. So the rats were complaining a lot, but just not enough for it to make sense that the other rats would want them to shut up mm. sort of thing. Um, and, uh, you know... On top of that, they said, okay, well, the rats are curious little creatures, aren't they? Maybe yeah. they freed the, the cage mate because they were curious. Uh, but actually, they, um, they they did it for over a month. Uh, after right. a, after over a month, the rat's going to stop being curious. About so that was the point of getting them familiar with each other. Yeah, so we'll say, no, we'll curious familiar with each other. As well. Curious about the cage as well. Oh, yeah, and that's, uh, if, if it's been a month... You're going to expect... Well, maybe They've they, seen the inside of that. Cause like, maybe they're going to get bored of this, right? Um, so th that they kind of did that in order to make sure, okay, well, it's not just the, it's not the curious thing. And this happens a lot in science, right? You've got to think... Um, you've got to have the kind of mind to think, okay, uh, what are the other explanations for this and how can we rule those out? Mm -hmm. um, and they said also door opening could be uh, just coincidental uh, because they're very active, but um, it's not likely because once the rats learn to open the door... They did so in shorter and shorter times, right? They were quicker at doing it. Um, it was a, it was a shorter time between them being put in the cage and them opening the door. Yeah. Um, and they did it in the same way, like they like they consistently did it um, with the same method. Yeah. Um, and so it kind of shows that they learned how to open the door, and then they were making the decision to open the door rather than just doing it by random chance. Because if they were doing it by random chance, um, you wouldn't expect to see an in, like a short and shorter time. I have a question. Yes. So. This will probably not be in your in your paper there, but um, one thing that's come up in my head is like I would assume once the rat lets the other rat out, mm -hmm. the experiment is over. They get to hang out for a little bit. They get hang out for a little yeah, bit. They get okay, to hang out for a little bit. That's fine because I was wondering whether they just didn't want to be in the cage and they learned that letting the other rat out meant that they would the experiment would be done and they'd be taken so away. The, the experiments lasted the same amount of time every time. They just got right. they just got so and that's why so they, even if they didn't free them they got taken out. Yeah and remember even if they didn't free them they would they would let the other rat out for a little bit. Right. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So Bravo science. Well yeah. done. Yeah. Sorry I should have mentioned that. Um but I didn't 
Yeah, but no, it, yeah. So they 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 did cover their bases quite a bit on this, mm. um, and so they then they then go on to say that, that this sort of um, this sort of shows that they were probably um, having this like sort of uh, empathy response, right? Or this 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 feeling of empathy, or the equivalent of empathy um, for rats, um, and that was driving them to let the other rat out. Um, which, I mean. I think is a harder thing to prove. Like you've really got to infer that. Like we've ruled out a lot of things, but we don't think we've ruled out everything, right? And so there's another study I've got um, that kind of looks into whether it's uh, social contact or uh, social contact in like in like rather than empathy that drives rats to rescue other rats. And that was done in 2013. That was published in Animal Cognition. Um, and I'll I'll just briefly go over it. Uh, essentially. They were they, they they did a they did a similar experiment, but th what they said was that um, this was kind of a new sort of a new kind of experiment, right? It was a novel experiment, and obviously with um, new experiments, there are some kind of kinks that you, you got to work out. Like you, if if the method isn't like sort of um, replicated a lot, then there could be some sort of issues with it, or some things that you've missed, or some things that were just not sort of. Sure of yet, like as in the results that you see could be um, a result of the experimental design rather than a result of the behavior of the rats, right? Mm -hmm. And because it's not been replicated a lot, it's hard to tell what is what. Yeah, mm. Does that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So they basically um, they used a sort of similar uh, they they used a, a kind of similar ish design, but um, quite similar ish in terms of they were looking for the same sort of thing. They had a trapped rat, but they did it in a very different way. Um, in order to sort of test, stress test um, this idea, right? Whether it is sort of this empathy response that is causing these rats to do this um, using like quite a different design that kind of tests for the sort of same thing. Um, and the results that they had were that it seemed more like it was social, um, basically social companionship that the rats were um, pursuing. But they still mm -hmm. let them out when they couldn't hang out with them. Yeah, I know. I, I know. So that, uh, again, they've said that could be an issue with the... The, app, Again, the rat thinks it's going to be able to hang out with yeah, them. Something, yeah, something right. like that. Like, there could be issues with the experimental design of um, the other experiment. But then, uh, but my then surely over time, the time to release the rat in the group that doesn't get to hang out with the rat would increase. Not necessarily, though. Well, it would learn. Uh, if, if it was like motivated towards, I get to hang out with the rat. Yeah. So what it says in this paper that's kind of a response to the paper that we've just gone over is that it's just that the method is new. And so they're stress testing it. And again, it could just not be st like sort of statistically significant. Again, because they used like kind of 30-ish rats in that initial experiment. Mm -hmm. So when you're saying, oh, you might expect to see this. But then also there's the rats. It, it's, there's a sort of random chance in there, especially with only 30 of them. So they used a different experimental design that had the similar sort of idea of a trapped rat and like different chambers. Um, basically to push the sort of push the sort of um, idea that they had to its limits to see if it, they still saw the same results. And they didn't uh, see the same results with looking at theirs. Um, but also, on top of that, there was a paper in 2020 in Nature uh, called Rats Display Empathetic Behavior Independent of the Opportunity for Social Interaction. Um, and in that paper, uh, they removed social interaction as... Um, they sort of removed the social interaction almost altogether um, using like, I think it was this weird cage where there was like water involved and it was just, like, there was no contact between the rats mm. whatsoever. Um, and they found that um, rats would still learn to release um, a, a sort of cage mate that was stressed out um, and they would remember how to do the task for like a long, a longer period of time. Um, and if they had previous experience with the same um, environment, um, it then would shorten the time that it would take for the rat to to sort it out. So if they had experience, they'd be like, "Oh God, I don't, I don't like that. Mm. I remember how that was. I want to let them out." Mm. Sort of thing. That's kind of what they're saying that happened with those rats. Um, and it says that altogether, they sort of um, th they basically think that kind of indicates that the rats are experiencing some form of empathy. And the reason that I bring up sort of these two studies is because the point I'm trying to make is that it's very difficult to infer. <laughs> Um, the internal experience of something. So, for example, like an ant, that's an example that was used in the second paper that I mentioned. Mm. Um, in ants, they will um, basically try and help uh, or rescue um, other ants, right? If they if there's a, if there's an ant yes. in trouble, often they will try and rescue another ant. But are they doing that because they feel empathy for the other ants? 
or is it just like this inbuilt like sort of programming in their ants of like oh is we get this signal got to rescue the ant yeah right like because it, it's beneficial for the entire group right it's, i don't quite understand the difference between those two things so there's a, there, there's a bit of a difference between an emotional res- an emotional response um uh that pushes you towards doing something so for example if you are feeling sad and i then feel empathy for mm-hmm. your sadness mm-hmm. that's that doesn't that doesn't mean that I'm immediately going to try and comfort you or make you feel better. I could be like, "Oh, you're you're really bumming me out." I'm gonna go go away. home. <laughs> yeah. Like I I could do that or be like, "Can you like stop being yeah. sad? It's bothering me." Yeah, I know. I could do that. Yeah. Whereas with the ant, it's not less. It's not feeling empathy. It's not feeling sad because the ant, other ant is feeling sad, and that's not driving it to um, then rescue the other ant. It just has an inbuilt thing of. This signal means this output. Uh, yeah, sure. So empathy is the feeling. And so you're trying to measure whether whether an organism has a subjective experience of some kind of, for example, some kind of suffering when another animal or another organism is suffering, despite mm-hmm. the fact that there's no reason for it to suffer yeah. materially. Um, and that is a subjective experience, which you can never really know if another organism is having. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's and my so, point, yeah. And so... But if if an ant is acting um, in a way to save another ant and potentially putting itself in harm's way um, be, in order to save the, that ant, um, that is a different thing to if an ant is acting selfishly and has a positive so ha, positive output on a, a outlook on another a positive outcome on another organism, right? So. To a certain extent, you can never prove whether an ant is, or whether an ant, or whether a uh, um, a mouse or a rat or whatever has empathy. You just can't. It's not possible. You can't even prove if another person has empathy. You can only look at whether they are willing to put themselves in harm's way in order to, even by a tiny amount, pushing open the door for another rat is putting yourself in harm, harm's way. Even if it is by a tiny amount, you're diverting your behavior from something you'd otherwise be doing mm-hmm. in order to benefit another organism. Um, and regardless of what the subjective driver is, because you can never really know that, um, that is, you are observing a similar behavior, the willingness to put yourself at, at risk in order to save another organism. I don't think you can say this experiment proves that rats have empathy. And I don't think I have said that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that. They're trying to infer empathy. And that is as much as they can do. And the point of that is, as I've said, to... It is to figure out if that is something that non-human animals are capable of. Um, and that has a, a number of uses in understanding the evolution of sort of um, emotions, cognition, all of these things. It, it could be very useful. Um, it, yeah, and like obviously it's like they're, we're not trying to figure out explicitly do they have this exact subjective experience. It's, it is the precursor towards this pro-social behavior yeah. similar as similar to humans. Right, because a massive driver for pro-social behavior in humans is empathy, as like as I said at the top, and we're trying to see is that the same for rats, or is it uh, is there a different precursor to pro-social behavior? Yes. Now it's time for the quick fire quiz. Oh, Ooh, wow. bum 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 bum. Ending. Rat friend edition. <laughs> <laughs> you know the rules for the quick fire quiz. <laughs> I will ask one question between the two of you. The first person to answer the question correctly after buzzing in after I finished asking the question wins. What did he win, Jamp? Nothing. Gosh darn right. So my question for you is, Luke, what's your buzzer? Uh, very good. Jam, what's your that's buzzer? That's the rat in the cage. I'm coming to help. Thank you. That's the rat that's outside a very the long buzzer. That's not going to work. <laughs> so my question is, on average, how many chocolates do the three rats save for the trapped rats? Uh, I'm coming to help. <laughs> I think you came 1. first. 1.5 chocolates. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Well done. Good job. Yeah. You win 1.5 chocolates. Do I? No, you win no, nothing. No, you don't. You win nothing. Oh. That's right. cruel. Did you not listen? <laughs> it's absolutely nothing. Not even a single chocolate chip. Oh, you we didn't finished. even save me a single chocolate chip. Yeah, there weren't any chocolate chips. Chocolate not chip. even on average 1.5 chocolate chips. Not even 0.2 
chocolate chocolate chips that are left over on average, average by the control rats. Before we go, we'd like to thank all of our patrons and thank you for watching. You can find the full references for this episode in the description. Subscribe for new episodes every Sunday and why not leave us a nice wee comment? You can support the bot at patreon.com forward slash sly guys or you can join our community over on Discord or you can find and contact us at sly guys bot on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram and YouTube or you can pick up our merch at normalcitizen.store or send us an email at sly guys pod at gmail.com. That's sly guys pod at gmail.com. Sly guys pod at gmail.com. You can follow me at not Corey everywhere. You can follow me at Jamkin everywhere. You can follow me at Luke Cupworth everywhere. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye.